Hola, buenas noches. Eh, buenas noches, los saluda Jessica Fernández. Eh, buenas noches a todos. A nombre de Canaway Academy, darles la bienvenida a nuestro Virtual Open House. El día de hoy tenemos una clase demostrativa de nuestro programa de inglés que corresponde a nivel intermedio. Esta clase va dirigida a jóvenes eh, mayores de 15 años en adelante. Esta clase tiene por finalidad mostrarles la dinámica de nuestras clases, las cuales son desarrolladas por los profesores, por nuestros profesores canadienses. Eh, darles la bienvenida también a los diferentes participantes. Tenemos eh, participantes de los diferentes países como Bolivia, Ecuador, México, Chile, eh, Perú. Esta clase tendrá una duración de 60 minutos y será dictada por la profesora Verónica Truns. Eh, al término de la clase les comentaremos brevemente las características de nuestro curso. Eh, para que tengan una mejor, una mejor, eh, puedan tener una mejor participación, eh, les sugerimos que estén en un lugar donde tengan una buena cobertura, eh, por favor tener sus micros apagados, si sí, encendida la cámara, eh, si ustedes desean hacer alguna pregunta a Verónica, por favor levantar la mano y eh, la clase eh, será grabada. ¿no? Eh, hi Verónica. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, Veronica. Fine, Hi. fine. Hi. How are you? You can start your class right now, okay? Fantastic. Great. We're ready to go. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's doing great. Uh, if you are there and ready to join, uh, please turn on your cameras if you are comfortable right now. Um, and also, please join in. Don't be shy to ask a question or to raise your hand or to write a question to me. Um, these classes are meant to be uh, extremely um, interactive and it's your class. So please don't be shy to jump in and be part of this, right? Uh, I'm not really here to just lecture you, um, but rather to uh, actually help you with your learning and help you as you need help. So. Uh, if you do need uh, need a question answered or need any more clarification, please, please speak up, uh, join in. Uh, and I also love to hear some uh, examples and practice and so on. So don't be shy. All right. So I'm just going to open up this um, PPT this way. Uh, it looks a little bit different than the Canaway classes will look like, but I just wanted to give you guys a little glimpse of what our classes are like. So before we begin, uh, my name is Veronica. I am a teacher here at Canaway. Uh, I teach ESL, uh, IELTS, and I teach classes from beginner all the way to advanced. But we are going to take a look at an intermediate class today. All right, so I hope everyone is ready to join in and try their best. Of course, um, we are going to do some activities together. Um, you are going to have time to um, write on the screen, actually. So please um, get your annotation out. If you are not sure how to do that, please let me know. Um, and of course, just speak. So if you want to answer a question or ask a question, please go ahead. All right, uh, and one last thing, because this is an intermediate level, um, I try to keep this class or all of these classes uh, in our courses completely English only, uh, no Spanish. So this is the best way to improve your fluency and your speaking skills and listening skills. Um, so no Spanish. Uh, if you want to answer a question uh, or join in at all, please just join in in English. Um, if you are not sure of something or you need a little bit of help or maybe I'm speaking too quickly or you don't understand something, please let me know. I'd be happy to speak slower or uh, redo a part if you need help, okay? So just let me know. Again, I cater this class to you guys. 
All right, so today we are learning all about gerunds. And if someone here is not too sure what gerunds are, a gerund is basically a verb with the ing at the end of it, like doing or skating or playing. So that is a gerund. So we're gonna, ooh, let's move on here, there we go. So we're going to take a look at gerunds and all the different forms that we use gerunds in. So why we use it and how we use it as verbs and even as nouns. So we've got quite a lot to look at today. OK, guys, so uh, of course, don't worry today about notes so much uh, as you're not going to have an exam on this anytime soon. But uh, in our real classes, of course, um, it is important to pay attention and to take notes of what we learn, of course, for our assignments and at any tests we have. OK, so uh, this is part of a warm up that we um, have in this class related to another class we did beforehand. So don't worry too much if you're not familiar with these signs as um, you didn't attend the previous lesson, but it is a part of the actual course. So let's just see how well we do. So we're going to try to organize the signs accordingly. So can someone tell me which sign here is meant for drivers? What sign is for someone in a car? If you'd like to raise your hand or answer, please go ahead. If you are familiar with how to use Zoom, you can go ahead and just circle the answers yourself. Hmm. So for example, I would say probably maybe no parking. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. There you go, Giovanna. You got that before me. Exactly. Any other signs that are just for cars or drivers, I should say. I see at least two more. Can anyone find any others? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Douglas. Sorry, say that again. One more time, Douglas. No. no, you said no. Can you say that one more time? I didn't hear you. I'm not sure what you said. I think you said no stopping. If that's the case, yes, good. Stopping um, is a no, no stopping any no, time. Yeah, exactly. So that would be a car, of course, no stopping the car. And I think there's one more, unless I'm missing one, but I see one more. Anyone else? No standing. Yeah, that would be for pedestrians. So that means a person. Oh, sorry, I see some chat messages. Yeah, no standing anytime. No idling. Yeah, very good. Thank you guys for sending me messages in the chat box. Exactly. Idling means kind of just not stopping your car, but just having it in park, but it's still on. So you're like waiting for someone. That would be idling. Good. Okay, let's take a look at the next one here. What about for people uh, at a beach or a lake? So they're swimming. Which science here would be for someone at a beach or a lake? What do you guys think? No yeah, no fishing, no swimming. Oh, you guys got this. Yeah, very good. Just go ahead and circle those. Well done, well done. Yeah, I think that's it. No diving. No diving. Yeah, where's that one? No diving. No diving. So that's like jumping in head first. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Very good. You guys got that. There's the no diving. Thank you for circling that. And lastly, um, any other signs? Let's take a look at some ones that we didn't really look at. How about this one here? No passing here to crossing. What do you think this is for? Is this for a person or is this for a car? What do you think? Any idea? This could probably be for a car, no passing other cars, which makes sense. 
Uh, and how about something like this? No talking. Anyone have an idea of what place or people this might be for? In the hospital. <gasps> hospital. Yeah. Sorry. What was the other idea? Library. Library. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. I lied. I'm going to do one more. <laughs> um, how about uh, no dog pooping? <laughs> what do you think that might be for? A park. A park. Yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Probably, yeah, probably just a lawn somewhere with like grass where they don't want dogs to be on. That probably makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, fantastic. That was really great. Thank you everyone for joining in and sharing your ideas. All right, so that is a warm up. Uh, our warm ups are uh, related to the topic and the lesson of that week or of that unit. So uh, in this unit, we are taking a look at signs and rules of vocabulary. Uh, but of course, you guys have not done that first lesson. So don't worry if this is a bit new for you. But just to show you how our classes are all connected really well. So now we're going to move on to our actual lesson for today, which is all about gerunds. So as I explained very briefly earlier, a gerund is when you have a verb with ing at the end or ing at the end. But when we say gerund, we're actually using uh, that ing verb to function as a noun. So does anyone know what a noun is? How do we define a noun? Anyone? It is a person, place, or thing. So that is what a noun is, basically an object or something you can touch in most cases. So a person, place, or thing is the definition of a noun. For example, a phone, or candy, or candle, or shirt. These are examples of nouns. So we're going to take a look at Jared as a noun. So uh, nouns, a big function of nouns, whether it's a gerund or just a regular noun, can actually be used as a subject or an object as the verb. So in case that is also a little bit new for you guys, a subject is usually the first thing in the sentence. So it's what is doing the action. Most of the time, it's one of the first words. And the object is affected by the action. So it's usually the second noun mentioned in a sentence. So for example, um, if I say Tom likes pizza, in this case, what is the subject of the sentence? Anyone have an idea? Tom. Tom, exactly. And then the verb is likes and then object would be pizza. Very yes, good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Douglas. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to take a look at gerunds as a noun. So there's different ways we can do it. One is a subject. So that would be something like this example. Swimming is always fun. So swimming, even though it might appear to be like a verb, because it's a verb, swim, it is a verb, and ing, maybe most people assume is always a verb. But in this case, it is an a noun, sorry, because afterwards we have a verb so nouns or subjects always have a verb following it so swimming is always fun so we can replace swimming with any type of noun like um, football is always fun or teddy bears is always fun or monopoly is always fun so those are all regular nouns in this case swimming is the exact same thing it's a noun and we're describing it as a subject Another example would be this one, Jack likes swimming. So Jack, as we see here, is the subject. We have the verb likes and swimming is the object noun. So like I mentioned earlier, the second noun mentioned in the sentence. So this could be any type of noun. You could say Jack likes movies or Jack likes cats. Those are normal nouns. 
In this case, swimming is a gerund, but it is treated exactly like a noun, like any word, like Jack likes chocolate, for example. So it's all the same. It's all just a noun. So we're going to take a look at that today a little bit closer. If anyone has any questions or you find it going too quickly, even if your question is not directly related to what we're talking about, and if you say have a question about nouns, for instance, please don't be shy. You can ask at any point. These classes are, of course, your classes. So let me know if you want me to explain anything further or more slowly. All right, so let's take a look at practicing those gerunds as subject. Oh, oh, oh that's not what I want to do. That's what I wanted to do. Subject or object uh, of, the, of the sentence. So let's take a look at these sentences and you tell me if that bolded verb or gerund is a subject or object. So number one, Julie prefers staying at home when the weather gets cold. Staying is a gerund. Is this a subject or an object? Anyone have an idea? Object. Excellent, yes. Because what is the subject then, Douglas? Julie. Julie, oh, very good. And that was, was that Gino? Thank you. Yes, very good. You're right. Okay, number two, cooking is always fun when you try new recipes. So cooking, what is that one? Object. Cooking. Cooking is subject. Subject. Yeah, very good. I think speaking is the most difficult part of learning a new language. Number three. Subject. Very good. I'll, very good, but I... Even though it's tiny, this is the main um, thing doing the action. So I am the one thinking. So I am doing the verb. So speaking here would actually be the object. You have to think the subject is the one that does the main action. So think is the main action of the sentence. And who is thinking? I am thinking. So I am the subject. Speaking is just related to the verb. Okay, the costs are so high that I can't afford living in Toronto any longer. Living, what is this one? Object. No? Object. Object. Yeah, very good. Yeah. The children don't always enjoy playing in the park. Correct. Sorry, Object. again? Object. Yeah, very good. Because we're talking about the children. They're the one doing the main action. Do you recommend walking or taking the bus to get to your house? Object. Object, mm -hmm. what? Object. Good, because you is the thing that we're, is, you is the person doing the action. So these are objects, exactly. I didn't finish cleaning because I had to pick up the kids. Any idea? <laughs> this one, cleaning, cleaning is object. It's the object, yeah, because object. fit, yeah, because I is a subject, finish would be the main verb here. Do you dislike watching science fiction movies? Object. Very good, exactly. You're talking about you in a question form, but it's the same. Very good. Uh, excellent. Any questions? Teacher, hello. Yeah, hello. I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what about using no? For example, Julie knows swimming or knows how to swim? Uh, no. Which one do you say? You would say knows how to swim. Okay, okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, knows how to do an action. So I know how to play football. I know how to play piano. I know how to speak Japanese. So you know how to do an action all the time. Very good. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? 
easy peasy. <laughs> okay, very good. Excellent, guys. Well done. All right, I'm going to erase this all. Let me know also if I'm going too quickly and you're taking notes. Okay, so here's some actually really helpful and important information. So these are just some different little information for you guys here. So important actually for other grammar reasons. Gerunds, if they're used as nouns, they are always uh, used as singular verbs. So anytime you use a gerund as a subject here, uh, it's used singularly. So cycling is easy, not cycling are easy. So basically cycling could be replaced with the pronoun it in this case, right? It is easy. Uh, cooking takes a lot of time. So it takes a lot of time. Walking has a lot of health benefits. It has a lot of health benefits. Not have. Have would be for they or a plural word. Does teaching require patience? So here we see that we have changed this gerund um, into a question. So we have, as any question goes, when it's a yes or no, we always start the yes or no question with a auxiliary, does or has or is or are. So that auxiliary will always refer to the subject to know what kind of conjugation to use. And teaching as a gerund is a singular verb. So basically it, does it require patience? So we always treat a gerund like it's an it, so singular verb, all right. Okay, next point here, we have a gerund up here in case you're following along, all right. So gerunds can begin noun phrases and the entire noun phrase acts as a subject or object of the verb. So we don't use gerunds as just one word all the time, like swimming is fun we can actually use it as a phrase as long as it's all referenced to one general subject like swimming in a pool is fun. So swimming or swimming in a pool are both the exact same. They're both singular gerunds subjects. So we would treat it the same grammatically. Swimming is fun. Swimming in a pool is fun. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Teacher, yeah. I, I, I got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, o sea, un ejemplo, for example, uh, cooking is my passion. Is 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 an is, is example, no? That's perfect. Yep, exactly. It's an exactly perfect gerund example. Or or uh, my passion is cooking. Yes, very good. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, exactly. You just you just change the format of the sentence, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cooking is still okay. the subject. You just changed it around. That takes skill, so very good. Yeah. You can also say cooking Chinese food is my passion. So you can still use a phrase and it would still be a gerund technically. So asking questions is important is an example of this. Because if you just say, asking is important it's not really like make sense asking what what do you mean so you might need more information sometimes uh, or more details in a gerund to make it complete so asking is important is not really it doesn't really make sense right you need to have a phrase in this case he prefers eating in a restaurant that's an example of a, fra a gerund phrase again he prefers eating rather than cooking doesn't isn't really it's kind of it, it's fine grammatically but i feel like it's missing information eating what exactly and cooking what exactly so we need phrases sometimes just for more detail he prefers eating in a restaurant rather than cooking for himself so eating in a restaurant is actually important here for this gerund because eating could be a lot of things <laughs> like eating at home, eating in McDonald's, eating in my car. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that could be there. So eating in a restaurant is the specific detail. So it's still a gerund even though we made it a phrase. Getting everyone vaccinated is urgent. This is a perfect example of a noun 
the subject or sorry, the verb to be and an adjective, right? Like dogs are cute or pizza is delicious. So this is an example of a very basic noun to be adjective. So this is an, an, an example with a gerund. So urgent is an adjective, it means important. However, if you just said getting is urgent, that completely makes no sense. Getting is not complete in this case. Getting what is important? Getting a car, getting a license, getting a degree, what do you mean? So getting everyone vaccinated is the phrase we use, but it's still treated like a gerund. As you see here in all of these cases, with the, with the main verbs, it is treated like a singular noun. All right, any questions so far? All right, very good. So remember, this is a noun phrase, not a clause. So a clause is a sentence that is complete and can be on its own. Like I study English, for example. A sentence can only be, can only be complete if it has a subject and a verb. That is all a, sub, a sentence technically needs to be a complete sentence. This asking questions or getting everyone vaccinated, these are not clauses, they're not used as complete sentences, they're just used as gerunds or as detailed subjects, basically. It's the context is important in this case. All right, and if no one has any questions, we'll move on to the last one here. So gerunds are used after prepositions in a lot of cases. So for example, she went from studying business administration to building her own company. So this is uh, something that just depends on the context of the sentence. From to means you started here and you ended here. He excelled in negotiation, negotiating international contracts. So you excel in something. That means you progress and do well really quickly. I look forward to visiting you next week. He often thinks about leaving. So you look forward to something all the time. You don't look forward with or look forward for. You always look forward to an event or an action. You think about something. I'm thinking about that TV show. I'm thinking about my exam. You don't think to or you don't think with. It's think about. And finally, the company grew by offering great service. So you grew by doing something. So we will have at, in Canaway an entire class based on preposition words. Um, preposition words are actually multiple classes, I should say, and something you do need to remember, especially when it comes to phrasal verbs, like to look forward to something. Uh, we do have lots of lessons on this in different classes. So if you are not like not too sure about phrasal verbs and uh, prepositions, don't worry, we have lots of classes on these. But for this lesson, uh, we're just explaining how gerunds are used after certain preposition words. Uh, and again, we will have classes about gerunds versus infinitives in this case. Okay. Everyone all right so far? Good, good, good. All right, so let's do a little activity. Uh, there is an annotation option directly on your screen. Uh, you guys can scribble <laughs> right on the screen if, uh, with your own pencil. So if you figure out how to do that, if not, you can write me the answer and I can write it for you. But see if you can match the um, sentences with the first clause and the second clause. That's not an answer. I was just giving you an example. So read the whole beginning part here and see if you can match it with one of the second parts on this side. Um, so I'll let you guys go ahead and write the answer. So if you think you know the matching sentence, go ahead and connect it with a line and then I'll read them after. So take a couple minutes. Uh, yeah, there you go. Guillermo, well done. 
perfect and it's correct very good and here we see a jaren stopping oh good giovanna until the pandemic <laughs> yeah that's very nice very good guys they might need to take a moment or two to read them So their parents told them to behave, the drinking, singing, dancing got out of control, the party. Yep, that makes sense completely. Good. Okay, I know it gets a little messy here. And shining the problem is crucial in order to find a solution. Yeah, well done, well done. They decided to take their dog with them because leaving it behind was a bad idea. Yeah, very good. Do we get any others? Yeah, you guys both got that one right. Perfect. Very good, guys. Yeah, you both got that one. Sorry, I just saw that. Leaving without his passport was a mistake because he was denied entry to the US. Well, very good. Um, we're missing four and eight. Oh, and six. Oh, sorry, there's four. After she finished studying for her exam, she felt more confident. Perfect, good work. Good. Um, number we're still only number six, number eight, guys. What do you think? Even though I don't mind doing it, answering all the email. Oh, that is a spelling mistake. All the emails. Sorry, there you go, guys all the emails means that this has to be plural all of them means like many so that is a spelling error very good and i thought oh actually we did get that one didn't we yeah i think that's all of them very good excellent you guys got those all right well then uh does anyone have any questions no worries okay perfect i'm going to erase this please tell me if i'm going too fast I will go until you tell me to slow down. <laughs> All right, next one here. So I know I mentioned that prepositions is a whole other lesson and actually multiple lessons. So let's see how we do with choosing the correct uh, prepositions. So gerunds can be the object of prepositions. Like I mentioned earlier, gerunds can actually be um, the object, like Tom likes cooking for his family or something like that. So if we use a gerund as an object, it also can be the object of a preposition, which means a preposition word. If anyone needs a review, basically are those short little filler words, words like in, on, for, at, about, and of. Those are examples of preposition words. They kind of fill in the sentence to make it correct. So let's see if we can choose the correct preposition. So these might be new for a few of you. Um, we will go through them after. Uh, you might be completely familiar with a couple. So just like we did with the previous activity, if you think you know the preposition word, please write it directly on the screen or write it in the chat box and I can do it for you. All right, and see if we can choose uh, the right preposition word. <laughs> All right, uh, so I see some uh, messages here. Someone asked, I'm so sorry, Edo, um, how do you pronounce idling? It's with a long I, idling. Mm, with a long I, idling. Good. Okay, Mark, it's just on leaving. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. By the way, sorry, I didn't mention this. Some of these preposition words can be used more than once in these answers.
And go ahead, take your time. And yeah, about, I know sometimes the writing's a little big, but yeah, about moving. I thought about moving. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. How's it going? You guys can just guess if you're not sure. I'd be happy to help you if you're not, right? Hmm. All right, I can give you some clues. You agree on something. Like we agreed on the time we're meeting up. So they agreed on meeting at seven. They just, Mr. and Mrs. Jones decided, decided on having a party. We planned, I hate to say this again, we planned on traveling. <laughs> you plan on doing something. They believe, anyone know that one? What do you believe? You believe on, believe in. What do you believe in? Very good, Guillermo, yeah. You believe in something. Very good. Yeah, she did complain about. Yeah, you complain about something. Very good. She spent a lot of money for getting. It's actually on. You spend a lot of money on doing something. Like I spent a lot of money on dyeing my hair. So you spent a lot of money on getting her house. Oh, sorry, her house. Where did I get that? Getting her <laughs> car fixed. Didn't complain about. Mm -hmm. Very good. Last one. On arriving early and we're they consisted on very good excellent well done so please let me know if you guys have any questions on any of these um, I'd be happy to help you out a little bit with this one but uh, preposition words and phrasal verbs in general um, these ones are things that you just do have to practice and kind of remember I know I hate to say that but that is the best way for this um, the, these type of grammar rules. But we do have um, classes on them where we practice uh, a lot of that, this and learn lots of new phrasal verbs. This is kind of a review as it's uh, previous classes too. Okay, very good. I'm gonna erase that if we're okay. I'm not hearing any anyone saying to stop okay <laughs> all right uh here's a quick little bit of information actually this chart is super helpful i would recommend noting this down so there are some verbs that can be followed by infinitives an infinitive is to do for example so it's to and then the base form verb um, some on the other hand are followed by gerunds so for example i enjoy doing something uh, I like to do something. So sometimes um, some verbs, you have a, an infinitive follow it, and sometimes you have a gerund follow it. It's something you just have to remember. I hate to really say that. It's not a very strict, easy rule of which is what. Uh, it is something that you just have to remember which one is which. Uh, I know that's a pain in the butt, <laughs> and I, I wish I could give you an easier uh, answer for that, but you do have to just remember that, kind of like verbs, some are regular and some are irregular. You just have to remember which is which. For example, uh, she enjoys cooking. You do not say she enjoys to cook. It's just a weird way to say it. It's not correct. It's enjoy doing something. He stopped smoking, not stopped to smoke in this case. They don't like eating fish. Can we postpone leaving? Not can we postpone to leave? Uh, so these ones down here are all 
incorrect. So we wouldn't say this in English. You wouldn't say like she listens speaking. It just doesn't sound correct. It's not the correct way to say that. You'd have to say she listens to the speaking of the professor or something like that. So this one would have to be an infinitive to speak. So these are all super helpful. Uh, if you want to take a photo or screenshot or if you're writing notes down, that's even better. It's easier to remember when you write down. Um, these ones are followed by gerunds. So like avoid doing something or uh, I finished cleaning my house. Um, I suggested studying harder. I practice doing yoga every day, for example. Does anyone want to try to make a sentence with one of these verbs following a gerund? I can write one example so you can see. Um, like uh, Tom considered um, learning. Oops, I can't type very well. Uh, Tom considered learning French before moving to Paris. <laughs> That's just an example. So he considered, as we see here, and if, if it's going to be some kind of action after mentioned, then it has to be a gerund. So that's my sentence. Does anyone else want to try to make a sentence with one of these verbs with a gerund after? You can write it down or say it out loud, whatever you'd like. Does anyone want to try to make a sentence? See you guys practice a little bit. How about with practice? Does anyone want to try to make a sentence with practice? I practice running or something else? Everyone's a little quiet today. No one wants to try? If you're a little shy, you can always um, feel free to send it to me in the chat box and I'd be happy to read it anonymously if you'd like to, okay? No one wants to practice? All right, well, if you would like to practice in class, I do like to have us all a little bit um, engaged. Oh, very good, Guillermo. I will begin practicing English. Perfect. Yeah, that's an exactly correct answer. Very good. Uh, yeah, I do like to hear lots of engagement, guys. This is your time to practice. If it's not right, that's fine. That's your time. So this is your time to make mistakes. Anyone else? Douglas, did you want to answer one or try one? No, not sure. All right, guys, well, I'll leave it then. You're free to practice. If you'd like to send it to me in the chat in private, uh, I can take a look at it and like read it and just uh, help you out. But um, I can keep it anonymous if you're a little bit shy. But please don't be too shy to uh, go ahead and um, share your examples this is your time oh very good i strongly recommend studying in kennaway perfect me too <laughs> exactly so recommend would have to have an ing after so you would not say i recommend to study it's recommend studying good i avoid walking down that street exactly you definitely cannot say i avoid to walk perfect that's exactly correct very well done Okay, any last examples here? We do got to finish up shortly. Okay, going to finish that. All right, we're going to get to this next little bit here. Uh, just uh, this is a quick review of the three different main uses of using a verb with ing. Okay, so there's three main reasons we use it as a progressive verb, as a gerund, as we're use, looking at today. So that's our main focus today, or as an adjective as well. 
Um, so don't worry about this so much because in class we are only really focusing on this gerund today, but this is just a review uh, just so you know all the uh, times you might see ing with a verb, okay, so you don't get confused. So we can use ing on a verb if it's an actual verb as a progressive verb. So, for example, the children are playing in the park. He isn't listening to the music now. Those are examples of a progressive verb. A progressive verb is always noun or subject with the verb to be. So is or are or if it's past, was or were. And then the verb in the ing. Like I am teaching you guys gerunds today. So that's an example. So it's actually a verb in this case, not a gerund, it's not a noun. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick timeline example up here. So we use the progressive verb, either something that's happening right this moment, like I am teaching, you are listening, we are using Zoom. These are examples of something that's happening right this moment, or it's something that's happening right now in the period of my life. So maybe not right the second, but in this period of my life. So I know when it started in the past and I know when it will finish in the future. And right now in my life, this is a part of my life, but it will end soon. Something like uh, at work right now, we are working on a new website. Or this week I am studying the past tense. Or um, this week me and my family are moving to another city. So maybe it's not happening right this second, but it's a current action that's happening in your life currently. Maybe yesterday, maybe tomorrow, but you know it will end soon in the future. And you also know when it started in the past. So it's just like a current period. So that is what the present, uh, sorry, progressive verb means. So that's another time we might see a verb with an ing. We see uh, ing verbs with gerunds, so they're basically nouns. This is what we've been doing today. So we treat it like a noun. So instead of saying like, um, pizza is delicious, pizza is a noun. We can say like, um, um, cooking fresh pizza is delicious. Cooking fresh pizza is also a noun as well. So we can use it as a noun. So when we kind of want to ch uh, change a verb into a noun, we use it as a gerund. It could also be used as an adjective, meaning it describes a noun. For example, she held the sleeping baby. So we sleeping is actually an adjective. It's describing the baby. So she held the small baby. She held the cute baby. She held the a uh, blue-eyed baby, she held the sleeping baby. It's an adjective, it's describing what the noun is or looks like. Uh, everyone is worried about rising costs. He gave a very motivating speech. So these are adjectives describing the nouns. So these are the three ways that we can have a verb or a base verb with an ing after. Does anyone have any questions? No, we're okay so far. All right, guys. Well, uh, we do actually have a few more activities that we could do as a class to practice a bit more gerunds. Uh, I would get you guys in some breakout groups so you can work together to do some writing and build sentences. I'll show you an example. Um, so you would make sentences in adjective gerund and progressive verbs, all three different ways to make a sentence as an ing for one verb just like we just looked at. So I would get you guys to do this in groups. You can do some practice on your own. We have lots more activities to do as we would have, uh, this would only technically be halfway through our lesson, but we do need to finish up as it's been 45 minutes and I don't wanna take up any more of our lovely host's time. <laughs> um, but there's a hopefully a helpful lesson on gerunds for you guys. And if you are still interested in learning a little bit more, we do have a lot more classes and activities to practice this. Uh, does anyone have any last questions about gerunds or anything at all?
teacher, I, I got the question. Um, uh, what is hard for me is um, I, I I haven't been able to find the to find to figure out the rule when to use to and the gerund. For example, uh, I look forward to hearing. Uh, I don't find a rule <laughs> there because mm. there are some verbs or some use like that. Uh, to and a gerund, a verb in, in a gerund. But how? How do I know? Mm -hmm. um, I know it's a really tough one. Unfortunately, it's like kind of like knowing the difference between a gerund and an infinitive or a regular verb and an irregular verb. It is something that you kind of just have to practice and remember. Some, okay. um, yeah, I know I hate to say that way. I wish there was a super easy way to um, explain it more. Um, but yes, there are some sometimes where you have like a, an ing after the preposition and sometimes you have an infinitive after the preposition. Um, we actually do have a class here about that as well. Uh, we look at the chart with different ones and we practice making sentences with each and it is then something that you can practice and remember. Okay. That yeah, that is a fluency thing. So it is something you do have to remember, kind of like the difference between like study studied and eat ate, right? Right? Like why is one easy, one is hard? You just kind of have to remember it. Mm -hmm. I wish I had an easier way. <laughs> um, anyone have another question? That, that is a very good. That is a whole lesson, right? Where you said Guillermo. Does anyone else have another question? We're okay. All right, you can also tell me uh, in the chat box if you'd like. All right, guys, so I hope you learned a little bit about gerunds today uh, and enjoyed our lesson. Uh, so I will hand you back to our hostess, with the mostest, uh, to explain a little bit more about Canaway. It's lovely to get to meet and hear some of you today. And thank you for being patient and enjoying the lesson with me. Thank you, thank you. No problem, guys. It was lovely to meet you. I hope to see you again soon. I hope to see you soon, all of you. All right, you take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, Veronica. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Have a great week. Brenda, por favor, su Have cámara para tomarse eh, una foto, por favor, para que les puedan tomar una foto. ¿Listos? Pueden prender todas sus cámaras para tomarles una foto, por favor. Ok, listo, Nelly. Creo que puedes tomarles ya la foto. ¿Me avisas? ¿Ya está, Nelly? Sí, listo. Ok, gracias. Thank you, Verónica. Bye, bye. A ver, ¿qué tal la clase? Bye, ¿Les gustó la clase? Bueno, todos los profesores que ustedes van a encontrar en Canaway son profesores eh, como Verónica, ven que tiene, que habla perfectamente eh, el idioma, entonces eh, todos sus profesores van a ser de esa, de esa calidad, ¿correcto? A ver, un poquito para informarles cómo es la estructura de nuestros cursos. Eh, si nosotros empezamos desde un nivel inductivo serían 22 meses. Cada mes es equivalente a un ciclo. Son dos ciclos de inductivo, ocho ciclos de nivel básico, ocho ciclos de nivel intermedio y cuatro ciclos de nivel avanzado. El A1, A2, B1, B2 son las islas según el marco común europeo y las equivalencias son las que nosotros tenemos al costado. Ahora, en inductivo 1, inductivo 2, básico 1 y básico 2, eh, las clases eh, serán dictadas por un profesor hispano, ¿correcto? ¿Por qué hispano? Porque nosotros necesitamos una, un profesor que hable nuestra misma lengua para darnos los conocimientos que son bastante básicos para que nosotros podamos llegar a entender bien el inglés y eh, no tengamos problemas más adelante. A partir del básico 3 en adelante, 
todos los profesores son canadienses, ¿correcto? Eh, estudian todos los alumnos de lunes a viernes, hora y media de clase. Todos los días tienen hora y media de clase. Aquí, por ejemplo, en este cuadro, eh, ustedes están viendo los cursos que ustedes podrían llevar estando desde un básico. Eh, cuando el alumno llega a un básico 6, de un básico 6 a un básico 10, están ingresando, pueden ingresar a un curso de conversación básica, ¿correcto? Luego tenemos conversación intermedia, que irían todos los cursos que están de intermedio 1. Anali, ¿puedes bajar un poquitito la, la diapositiva, por favor? <coughs> ok, del intermedio 1 al intermedio 6, y conversación avanzado iría del intermedio 7 hasta nuestro, hasta nuestro avanzado 4. ¿No? Ese, es, ese es como nosotros tenemos distribuido el tema de conversación, que también lo podían aplicar. ¿Correcto? Eh, pasa a la siguiente diapositiva, por favor, Anel. Ok. Ahora, ¿por qué estudiar en Canaway Academy? Eh, las clases que nosotros eh, proporcionamos son 100% en vivo, ¿no? Clases en tiempo real, con profesores canadienses, y tiene, eh, bueno, tiene, durante toda la sesión de clase, siempre están con los profesores ahí para que ustedes puedan hacer sus preguntas y los profesores puedan responderles. Son clases completamente inmersivas. Ahora, eh, todos los profesores que nosotros tenemos son certificados. Todos los profesores han estudiado para enseñar, <coughs> perdón, el inglés como segunda lengua. En los grupos, tenemos grupos de un promedio de 15 alumnos para que sea una clase ágil. Ahora, todos nuestros profesores eh, están, eh, usan ya todas las, las herramientas que la tecnología nos ofrece. Eh, debo mencionarles también que Canaway es una institución desde sus inicios virtuales. Nosotros aperturamos en el 2018, eso quiere decir que nosotros no somos virtuales por pandemia. Ojo, somos virtuales desde que aperturamos eh, clases 2018. Eh, la metodología que nosotros tenemos es completamente inmersiva. Eh, los puntos que se tratan siempre son eh, puntos que vivimos día a día, las... Por ejemplo, si hablan de tiempos, eh, todos los tiempos van acorde con, con nuestra vida diaria, ¿correcto? Ahora, tenemos la interacción, ustedes van a poder tener alumnos de diferentes países, como les mencioné en un inicio, dando la bienvenida, tenemos alumnos de Chile, de México, Ecuador, Bolivia, tenemos alumnos que están en Canadá y que desde allá también se conectan para estudiar con nosotros. Ahora, tenemos los certificados, los certificados salen automáticamente cuando ustedes han aprobado satisfactoriamente cada ciclo. Eh, los certificados también los otorgamos una vez concluido cada nivel. Estos certificados los tienen de manera digital y ustedes los pueden bajar culminado su, su ciclo, ¿correcto? Las clases, como les repito, van de lunes a viernes, hora y media, Ahora, tenemos cursos para niños de 5 de a 6 años, son los pre-kids, de 7 a 10 años los kids, y el modo de aprendizaje para estos grupos es de una manera lúdica. También es un curso completamente de inmersión, los chicos se les va enseñando el idioma a las actividades cotidianas que realizan. ¿Correcto? Cuando, este es un curso, por ejemplo, de 12 meses. Son 12 ciclos, uno, cada uno independiente del otro. Cuando los chicos culminan estos 12 meses, están preparados para pasar a, a un básico 3. ¿Correcto? Ahora, el tiempo que ellos estudian no es como el de mayores, no es como el de juniors, porque los chicos a esa edad, más de una hora... Eh, imposible que puedan estar atendiendo una clase por más divertida y lúdica que sea. Pasan allí, por favor. Y luego también tenemos los siguientes programas. Tenemos la preparación, ojo, solamente tenemos la preparación para el examen internacional de LIELS, que se lo van a pedir cuando ustedes vayan de repente a un college, a una universidad o para algún trabajo. 
¿correcto? El promedio de alumnos también es de 15, es dictado de lunes a viernes, hora y media, alumnos de varios países y eh, el plus que nosotros ofrecemos es que nuestros profesores son o han sido examinadores de dicho examen. Entonces, eh, los resultados son bastante buenos. Ahora, para que ustedes ingresen y obtengan un porcentaje, un porcentaje de 7, 7.5 o 6, 6.5, deberían de haber culminado eh, todos eh, los 20 ciclos, ¿correcto? Sugerencia, si quieren empezar a llevarlo, pueden empezar a llevarlo a partir del intermedio 7. Y luego tenemos los cursos de conversación. También son grupos reducidos, son por medio de 12 alumnos, Aperturamos el ciclo con ocho alumnos, eh, dictado también por docente canadiense. ¿Correcto? Pasamos, Anali, por favor. Ahora, en cuanto a inversión. Nosotros, en un inicio, cuando recién iniciamos con las clases, el costo era de 125 dólares por mes. Viene la pandemia y eh, tuvimos un reajuste de 65 dólares que fue hasta el día eh, 10 de enero de este año. A partir del 11 de enero eh, subió a 79 dólares por mes. Luego tenemos eh, dos meses por 130 que pueden ustedes o tomar dos cursos o puede eh, de repente el hermano o la hermana tomarlo, el esposo o la esposa. ¿Correcto? 2 por 130. El de cuatro meses que es 250 dólares, pueden tomar varios, los, varios cursos, eh, este curso o este precio eh, aplica solamente para una persona. Y lo que tenemos ahora y que está dando bastantes resultados para un nivel intermedio como el que ustedes están, son las membresías. ¿Por qué? Porque la membresía les va a permitir a ustedes tomar cursos en paralelo. Si pueden verla o si re, retuvieron un poco el tema de... Anali, ¿puedes poner dónde están los cursos, por favor? Ok, por ejemplo, ustedes a partir del básico 6 podrían llevar en paralelo básico 6, conversación, si están en un intermedio pueden llevar intermedio 4, conversación y pueden llevar también... Eh, les da la facilidad de que entren a IELTS para que vean cómo es, ¿no? Entonces, o si quieren, si ustedes tienen, por ejemplo, a las 7 y media de la noche, intermedio 5, y en la mañana tienen un espacio para llevar conversación intermedia, lo pueden llevar. Y si después de 7 y media tienen otro hueco, pueden llevar otro curso de conversación. Entonces, la membresía nos sirve para llevar varios cursos. Si ustedes quieren aplicar, aplica de julio a diciembre. ¿Correcto? A ver, pasamos a Nelly, por favor. Ok. Para que activen el descuento, eh, pueden escanear el código QR. Si ustedes desean tomar por mes, eh, por 79 dólares, eh, les van a hacer un descuento de 10 dólares, solamente por el primer mes. Entonces, esos son, ese es un beneficio aparte que, que se les está otorgando por comprar solamente un mes. Eh, y bueno, ese ha sido, tenemos una diapositiva más, Sandalí. Ah, ok. Antes de pasar a las preguntas, eh, nosotros tenemos un examen de clasificación que es gratuito. Eh, un asesor se va a comunicar con ustedes. Y eh, les van a alcanzar el, el examen de clasificación, ustedes lo, lo hacen, les va a tomar 20 minutos, 20, 30 minutos, y ustedes iniciarían sus estudios a partir del resultado del examen. No es necesario que tomen los 20 ciclos porque ustedes ya tienen cierto nivel, ¿correcto? Ese examen igual es para que tomen el curso de conversación o el curso de IELTS, ¿ya? Um, a ver, ¿tienen ustedes alguna pregunta? Nada, bueno, creo que todo les... Yo tengo una pregunta, este, de, de lo que comentas, de ahorita, por ejemplo, pagar solamente un mes, que de 79 dólares bajaría a 69. Correcto. ¿Hasta cuándo se puede tomar esa promoción o ese descuento? Iniciamos las clases el día lunes 4, 
Eh, les recomiendo, por favor, si van a hacer cualquiera de los pagos, puedan hacerlo esta semana porque eh, algunas personas toman o, o van a hacer el pago el último día o el mismo día del inicio de clases y algunas veces la página se satura. Entonces, ese precio lo van a tener hasta el inicio de las clases. Ok, entonces hasta el lunes 4. Uh -huh. Ok, gracias. Ok, ¿alguna otra pregunta? Nada, bueno, creo que quedó completamente claro eh, recordarles, sí, que todos nuestros profesores eh, son canadienses, a partir del, base, o desde el inductivo 1, 2, básico 1 y básico 2, están acompañados por un eh, profesor hispano, luego todos son canadienses. Eh, el plus que nosotros también les ofrecemos es que estamos siempre viendo cómo va el desarrollo de cada alumno, ¿correcto? Eh, ustedes van a poder eh, contactarse o conectarse siempre vía WhatsApp o conmigo o con sus asesoras para que puedan darle todas las ayudas del caso. Tenemos un chat de ayuda, también por si en algún momento ustedes no tienen algún problema, de repente tienen algún problema con la plataforma, entonces pueden ingresar al chat de ayuda. Eh, otra cosita que quiero recordarles, si es que ingresan a Canaway, en nuestra plataforma ustedes van a encontrar eh, sus clases grabadas, ese es un plus bastante importante que tiene Canaway. Eh, ustedes tienen la clase en la plataforma grabada, su propia clase. ¿Correcto? Eso quiere decir que si ustedes un día no pueden ingresar a la clase, bueno, van a tener el soporte de esta grabación. Luego tienen las tareas, tienen los quizzes, tienen el examen final, tienen un workbook y eh, hay una parte que dice calendario académico, que por favor, sí, eh, les voy a pedir de manera muy especial que siempre estén ingresando. Ahí ustedes van a tener el día de inicio de clases, el día que finaliza el curso, eh, cuándo son los cuises, cuándo se encuentran las tareas, o cuándo se entregan las tareas. ¿Ya? Entonces, eso sería todo por mi parte. Yo soy Jessica Fernández, cualquier consulta, igual eh, se pueden contactar al, al WhatsApp de las asesoras o el de la página. Ok, buenas noches, muchas gracias, hasta la próxima. Gracias, hasta luego.